Yat. I'm also working at the Austrian Media Tech. And I will continue to tell you a little bit uh, of history, and especially the history of the five years of archive and with everyone at the Austrian Media Tech. So to understand our use case, I think I have to tell you a little bit about what our institution is. And the Austrian Media Tech is the Austrian National Audiovisual Archive, and our purpose is to um, preserve the audiovisual cultural heritage. So this is this is quite a, a, a really huge task, and maybe you think we're a big institution, but um, <coughs> actually we're 20 people, and the video team has consisted of two to three people for the last couple of years. So um, I think you have to keep this in mind to understand our use case and what we have done. Um, our collection is mainly audio, which uh, consists of half a million um, audio items. Our video collection is much smaller and only consists of 30,000 videos, but still, if you keep in mind it's just three, two people, um, there's a lot of things to do. So the use case for African One for us is first of all was to digitize, or still is to digitize our tape-based video collection directly in African One. We didn't want to uh, do any transcoding in order to to spare us some time. So the direct um, digitization process was, yeah, um, made it easier. Uh, the other use case is that in the last couple of years we are having a growing collection of born digital video material and there the use case is to transcode the material in order to have some normalization and to ensure the access of those videos files for, for long-term purposes. So what happened since our decision for FFU1 um, first of all, as Herman told you, um, we felt that time is very limited to digitize our tape-based videos. So we didn't want to do a digitization, which is one video at a time. We needed to establish a process of, uh, of a parallel digitization workflow. And at that time, there was no um, workflow management system, digitization system available where we could have a FFU1. So this decision led us to the development process of TV profession, which uh, Helen told you about. <coughs> so this was the first really big um, project for the first two to three years. Um, well, and in the year 2011, it was the summer, we started to get productive with our digitization system. So actually it's it's an anniversary now. So it's really five years now. And yeah, I think time to celebrate. Um, so sorry, where were it? Um, yeah, so we started to digitize and um, what happened quite soon is that we found out that uh, our storage capacity uh, is much faster going to a, a limit. And, well, you could just say, um, well, then add some storage space. But our system at the time was not very flexible. So we ended up having a, a huge reconstruction site and building up a new storage system in order to make it more flexible to, to add some storage space because we need, we need to do this on a regular basis to hold up with our digitization progress. And for small institutions like us, um, storage space is really still not very affordable and still an issue. Um, yeah, and while we had those two big projects and construction sites in the past five years, we also managed to digitize about 5,000 videos of our collection, which I think is quite a great number to keep the circumstances in mind. Um, 
how do we use our FFU1 material? Um, I think the first point is that um, uh, I think it's important to say we use our material. So there, there are many archives and institutions, <coughs> especially the small ones, who digitize and then leave it on the storage and don't have a, a really a use case for it. So um, our use case is that as a public institution, we feel obliged to provide as much access as possible to our collection. And this we do by uh, providing a web access. So um, every archivist will know that this comes hand in hand with rights issues. So most of the time we are not allowed to put our digitized video material online, and therefore we have to edit video clips for uh, it, it, because many times there's only specific parts of the videos uh, available for putting it online. So this is, um, yeah. How do we do our editing? First of all, I haven't told you how we do our capture process, which I forgot. Um, <laughs> we're working on Windows interest clients, and we're using Virtual Dub as a capturing software in order to be able to capture FFV1. Um, we also are dependent on FFV short trials, um, and we are still very happy with Virtual Dub itself, which is a really great extra capture applications and, and gives, which gives you also a lot of feedback during the capture process. So if we edit clips, um, they're mostly very simple. Um, it's just in and out and for that process we use virtual dub as well. And we also use for a little bit more sophisticated um, editing, use KDN Live. Um, and now I'm going to this is my last point, this is the future. What, uh, what are the next steps for the Austrian media team? So, um, about this I have to tell about epithetical trials. Epithetical trials comes with some limitations. It only allows you to um, capture Apple 3 one version 1. It still has not adopted Apple 3 one version 3. Uh, and the other thing is that it only allows you to capture an 8-bit storage component. So as archivists, we want to uh, we want the best for our material. So in order to um, yeah to do that, we we are going to uh, change our capture application. So this is going to be the the main task to leave Windows, which was the only reason. Um, for using Windows was to use virtual dub. Um, we will have to leave that and change our interest workstation to Windows clients um, and yeah, change to FFV1 version 3, then we for component and the next step will be yeah. to change our container, which has been AVI and still is, and we will change to NPD. So that is still many things to do and Thanks for your attention. And it wasn't the, wasn't the, the money no. that you were a small institution, but was that you wanted something different and was available. Yeah. Okay. And 
looking back, uh, obviously you wouldn't back to some, uh, but uh, no, it's the, only, the, the reason why I didn't buy it is to uh, say, yeah. but meanwhile there is, for example, uh, now there is a uh, uh, system by Samoa, so now if I would have to make the choice today, mm -hmm. I would have the alternative to buy it system in Samoa. Okay. Yeah, but looking back, I think for us and in our institution and in our use case, there's still no option to FFP1 at the moment. Mm. So we, we wouldn't change our decision. We're still happy for our use case. And I think um, what, what Kate said, what I think is, is really important, that um, there's a lot of diversity in video archives. We're not a very homogeneous homogene <laughs> community. And I think uh, and the use case is, is different, dependent on so for us in our use case, I still I, I wouldn't recommend anything else. Yeah. Um, you said you were moving away from Windows and virtual Yeah. I'm just wondering, um, have you decided what you're going to move no, to? No, not yet. That's it's, it's a, a, point. a project. <laughs> but this is what we have to do in the next couple of years. Okay. Uh, because it's about uh, implementation of the you want. You talked about the editing suite having that. You should mention the reason why it's or the advantage of the that we uh, don't have to import the FFP1, you can edit it later. Yeah, that, that's so a really good chain, point. In the, in the production chain, this is one step further. Uh, the best would be that we ha would have cameras which uh, record in FFP1. We don't have it. Uh, now we have this way to capture FFP1 directly, and there's a way to edit FFP1 directly. Because there are tools, open source tools, which are using FFmpeg in the library, and of course are able to use FFP1. So in this, we heard a, we heard today about the. Um, the loss if you if you uh, don't edit native and you have to make a change, then you have to co uh, convert and you might lose something or you might make uh, a, a mistake. Uh, you can even even uh, you can open project files directly from the archive using files lying on in the archive. You don't have to to, to, to store your, your, your uh, edited file. Somewhere you just can't store a project file because it's using the native source. 